Welcome back to the Gentleman's Gazette. In today's video, we discuss business and client dinner etiquette, which is part of a series with part one being table manners and part two being restaurant etiquette. <laughs> Paying for business can be fraught with opportunities for things to go wrong. If you do everything right, no one really notices it, but if you get it wrong, you screw up big time and the deal may not happen. So the goal is to keep others around you comfortable, not to draw any negative attention to yourself so your personality and what you have to say can shine. Dining out can be so revealing of one's character that many companies make it part of their onboarding process before or when they hire you. It shows how well you can maintain a conversation, how well you fit in socially with your boss and your team, and how you can navigate basic etiquette. Now, a formal business dinner has different rules than a casual luncheon event or a meal with your boss. Of course, etiquettes can also be different in South America, the US, Europe, or Asia. It's always important to understand the culture you're in and what the local etiquette is. No matter where you are, a business lunch or dinner always has a host. If you go out with their superior, your boss chooses the restaurant as well as the time. If you're just going out with colleagues because you're hungry, there may not be a host necessarily. Unless, of course, you want to pick their brain, then you become the host and you invite them. The same is true vice versa. If someone wants to network with you or understand how you can help them and they approach you, then they become the host. In that case, just go along or answer their questions. If you are the host, on the other hand, do your homework and know who your guest is. There is no point in inviting a vegan to a steakhouse. Likewise, I'm from Germany and I have no interest in German restaurants in the US because I'm always disappointed. When you pick a restaurant, don't choose anything that's overly loud or crowded because after all, the main goal is to have a conversation. In the same vein, don't choose a restaurant that focuses on sloppy or difficult to eat foods. So don't go to the seafood boil or to the burger joint that is really greasy or to the ramen store where everything may splatter over your entire business outfit. It is essential to make a reservation because nothing makes you look as unprofessional as having to wait for a table because you didn't take any precautions. Also, when you do make a reservation, you can ask for a quiet table so you can accomplish the mission you set out to accomplish. Now that you know, one, how to identify the host, and two, how to choose the restaurant, three, make sure you put the reservation in your calendar and show up on time. If you're the host, arrive 10 to 15 minutes early so you can make sure you got the quiet table that you want and everything else runs smoothly. You may also wanna take the server aside and tell them that you're gonna pay for the dinner or the lunch. Four, where exactly should you sit? Obviously there's a table, but especially with bigger parties, there can be large tables and specific hierarchies. It's easiest when you're the guest. Just wait until the host tells you where to sit. In case you're not offered a seat, wait until your host sits and put yourself in a position that allows for easy conversation. Now, if it's just a dinner between two people, it's much easier than if there are 20 people involved. That being said, sitting all across at the other end of the table would be wrong. Now, if you're the host, and let's say you go out to a business lunch with a larger group of people of different companies, it pays to put someone from company A next to company B, followed by company A. That way people can talk and learn from each other. It's best to think about the specific seating arrangements before you get to the restaurant so you don't have a weird happening of people reseating themselves or moving chairs. In general, the person highest up on the food chain gets the best seat and so forth. So sometimes just the place where you sit at a table can indicate if you're a big shot or not. Five, a good host will always introduce new parties to each other. In the business thing, that means you mention their name as well as their position and what they do. If on top of that, you happen to know more information about those two people, you can share that as well, which gives them a common conversation starting point. For example, you could say, Tom, this is Matt. He's our VP of sales and he graduated from Cornell with a degree in engineering. Of course, I'm not gonna mention the engineering degree if the other person isn't an engineer. Maybe you can also think of hobbies and say, hey, he likes to play golf just like you. Now, sometimes at business dinners, you as a host may not know all the people in the other company. In that case, the most senior person there will introduce their team and so will you. Of course, if you're the guest, sometimes other people are not so well-versed in etiquette and they may not introduce you to the others or vice versa. In that case, you should briefly introduce yourself. To learn more about introductions and how to do them properly, please check out this video here. 
Six, dress appropriately. As a basic rule to a business dinner or lunch, you should wear out the same things you wear to the office. Of course, if it's a more formal business dinner at a nice restaurant, you can dress up more, but in some cases, it's not advisable to dress better than your boss because you might get offended. On the other hand, if it's an important client meeting, you wanna dress up from your usual standard. If the dress code is business casual, please check out this video. If it's more formal, check out the business attire dress code here. Of course, it also depends on the niche. If you're meeting with someone who works on a construction site all day, you'll be dressed differently than if you meet with someone who works at a law firm all day. Seven, don't show up ravenous and don't try to eat as much food as you can if someone else pays for you. Of course, hunger can get the best of anyone. So if you know you're hungry and you have to talk a lot, maybe eat something in advance. Also, if you go out with your boss and you order a gigantic steak during the middle of a day that puts you in a food coma afterwards, he knows that you're not gonna be your most effective that day. Eight, turn off your phone and keep it in your pocket. It's a sign of respect to fully focus on the person in front of you. And if you just check text messages or take calls, the other person thinks they're not important enough for your full attention. Nine, greet everyone involved with a handshake and smile. Yes, everyone, not just the boss or higher ups, but everyone from the top all the way down. It's very important that you stand up when you're doing it, otherwise it just feels and looks sloppy. Some very outdated rules suggest that men and women are greeted differently. However, in a business setting, it should all be the same, with a handshake that is firm, but not too firm, and a smile. 10, mind your table manners. You don't wanna look like a pig, and you also don't want other people to end up with your soup on their face. To learn more about that, please check out our guide on table manners, as well as restaurant etiquette. I'll promise you they'll make you laugh and you'll learn a thing or two. 11, don't order alcohol first unless you're the host. That being said, if you're the host, you may offer other people a drink. If they decline to have alcohol, maybe it's wiser for you to do the same because you don't know what their projections are on you if you do drink during the day, for example. If your host orders alcohol, feel free to join in and order a glass of wine, but you don't wanna get hammered midday or even in the evening during a business dinner. Now, if this is part of the interview, I'd strongly suggest you don't order wine. Even if your interviewer and potential boss orders one to see if you follow suit, I suggest you just say no thank you and move on. In general, don't get drawn into drinking more than you want and also don't push others to drink more than they want. If your glass has a stem, like a wine glass or a champagne flute, always hold the glass by a stem. 12, now it's time to order. Do so carefully, that means don't order the most expensive dish on the menu. And if you are the guest, you can always follow the lead of your host. Never order more courses than your host because that may look like you're abusing their generosity. Likewise, don't order messy foods that you have to eat with your fingers. Avoid looking picky or indecisive. And if you have food allergies, check out the menu beforehand and pick out an item that you can eat so everything can be smooth and you can get right to business. Which brings us to number 13, the conversation itself and at what point in time you can talk business without looking weird. Now, if your boss asks you out for lunch or dinner, there will likely be an agenda and you can just take him the lead and let him decide what he wants to talk to you about. You can prepare twofold. One, you can go over all of your projects and numbers, so if he asks you questions, you seem competent and know what you're talking about right away. Two, find about the family or the hobbies or the interests of your boss and revisit older conversations you had so you can easily start and keep a conversation going. If you go out with colleagues for lunch, you may just wanna talk about the project you're currently working on or if it's a bigger project and there's a standstill, it can really help to not talk about business at all in that context. Think about it this way. A business lunch is more like a business meeting where food is served so everyone can fill up their fuel tank. Since most people have very limited time over lunch, business is discussed very quickly. Of course, a quick non-business intro and conversation is just fine. On the other hand, if you're at a formal business dinner in Europe, it is essential that you don't talk business before dessert is served. At first, it may seem counterintuitive to talk so late about business at an essentially business dinner. At the same time, anything else would be considered rude by your host or by the person you invited to it. Of course, if the other party leads the way and wants to talk about business right away, you shouldn't make them feel uncomfortable either and just go along and talk about business. In the US, there are not such clear-cut rules, but you should never start with business right away. Do your homework, know what the other people are interested in, where they went to school, what their position is, and what they do. 
Most people like to share their achievements and accomplishments so you can figure out what they've done. I'm sure they like to talk about it. At the same time, it makes themselves more comfortable around you. And if you show an interest for them, they're much more likely to show an interest in you. The last thing you want to have happened is that business is all settled by the times the drinks are served and you having not done your homework. Because now there is a long dinner with likely awkward pauses that makes their party maybe rethink the commitment they just made with you because you seem like a strange guy. As a general rule of thumb, religion, sex, or politics should never be subject of discussions at a business dinner. My father-in-law used to run his own business and when they went on a business trip with a few people of his team to a big client in Boston, they had dinner together. Now, one of his employees said that his neighborhood was infested with Democrats and the client took my father-in-law aside and said, if you'll ever bring this person again, we'll stop doing business with you right away. So he was lucky because they knew it wasn't his fault, but saying things like that is just plain stupid. Chances are they might be offended and you can only lose. Instead, stick to hobbies, interests, and of course, business. So once the meal is over, it's time for the bill. The most important aspect of paying at a business dinner is discretion. Why? Because you as the host or the guest, you never wanna appear showy or screw things up. Ideally, you've taken the server to the side beforehand, maybe given him your credit card so he can just charge it and it's just a smooth transactions without any weird questions or back and forths. If the question of payment never arises, the other person can see that you can organize things and get stuff done. Now, for some reason, you can't get a hold of a waiter or it's not an option. When the bill comes, you discreetly take it and place your credit card inside of it. The worst thing you can do is pull out your wallet and put in one Benjamin Franklin after another. It's just showy and weird. Also, never argue over the bill because that's just strange. If you're the guest, just offer to pay. The host will likely say, no, I'm gonna take care of it. And that's the end of the story. Now, if the host pays in full, you should say thank you. If you, for some reason you split the bill, that is fine too. Now, what about tipping and servers? Tipping can hugely depend on the culture you're in. And so it pays to know in advance what to do when and where and what the usual amount of tip is. Also, you wanna treat all servers with respect because treating them in a mean or rude way can signal to your business partner that you have a problem with people management and he may not wanna do business with you because of the way you treat others. To learn more about tipping, how to treat servers, how to hold your fork properly, and how to avoid committing faux pas, please check out our tail manners guide as well as our restaurant guide here. In today's video, we're wearing a typical business dinner outfit. It consists of a business suit. It's a three-piece suit with a double-breasted vest. It is dark gray, so it's perfectly appropriate. It has a very faint stripe and works in any kind of formal office. I'm pairing it with a white shirt because again, it's formal with a proper necktie. It has a printed motif on it. It is red and picks up the color of the stripe in the suit. My pocket squirt is a white linen pocket square folded in an uneventful TV fold, which is standard for a formal business dinner. My socks are also not flashy. They match the color of the pant leg and they have a little bit of a red clock in it, which again, picks up the color of the rest of the outfit. My shoes are from Crockett & Jones. They're a monk strap shoe that's a full brook, and it works well with the formality scale of the suit, which is formal, but has a few more casual notes, such as the red color. You can find the socks, the pocket square, and the tie in our shop here. I suggest you stay clear of any kind of flashy jewelry or boutonnieres because it's over the top. The only thing you should be wearing is maybe a wedding band and cufflinks. These ones here are red carnelians in sterling silver from Fort Belvedere, and you can find them in our shop here. Thank you.